What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am BDLM coming to you with my buddy, J4Y, with episode 9 of our Dota On Demand podcast, which I decided to title uh, Silence, We Kill You, in honor of Jeff Dunham and the bringing in of Silencer. What is going on, buddy? Um, I haven't seen him in like a year, so I'm surprised Jeff you made that reference because he's kind of like dead now, but Aww. actually he's not dead. He Maybe. was just in uh, Baltimore, actually. I wanted to go see him while he was in town. Whoa! But... Giving away our location to the viewers. Oh I mean, my gosh! Just... Now they're, they're going to come to our houses and rape us. Whoa! Okay. Well, I hope. Anyways. Anyway. I, I was doing better until you said that. Um, actually, I have here an, a mana energy potion that I'm going to consume during the cast. So That's if I like start like rambling off about the devil or something, just. Just keep me in check. I don't know, why. I don't know well, what's going to happen with the mana potion. You know. Anyways, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. I would like to say that because of this patch, I had the funny little image in my head. I don't know. Uh, I remember I mentioned last time, I think, that we linked on our Facebook, actually, the little dev posts about this coming patch, which hit. Yay! Uh, introducing Spirit Breaker and Silencer, and how much trolling people did. Like, oh, only two heroes over a three-week period? Screw you guys. I, it reminded me of, like, uh, I don't know if anybody's seen Jay and Silent Bob strike back at the end of the movie. Once they get their money, they go and spend the money flying out to people's houses who badmouth them on the internet and then just beat the crap out of them. Because this patch, while it only has mm, two heroes, I, I would argue it has two and a half heroes. And I would also argue that it's probably one of the biggest patches we've had in a long time because of five new items i believe and right. then just all the crazy changes that have happened yeah no this patch is insane just yeah for the fact that they're mirroring the changes in dota one which is just awesome and like we we did discuss that in a previous cast if they if we were going to maybe see them go a different direction or they were going to follow along and sure enough it looks like they do want to stick along with what they were doing in dota one which is really cool because obviously you know, that's uh, still a lot of uh, people play Dota 1, you know, because it's still in the beta here in Dota 2. So it's not accessible to everyone, and it's still popular. Kind of like those other games like StarCraft 1 you've discussed about how that's still being played somehow, even though it came out like 1995 mm -hmm. or something ridiculous. Um, but I know, I make that sound like that's so long ago. I'm still young. But that's okay. <laughs> Back in my youth. Um, by the way, I also want to mention this smells like death. I. Oh. I am scared, but I will drink it for the sake of our cast. Uh, and then <laughs> I will good. warn the townspeople afterwards about it. Um, say for the sake of the cast, and it might be the single most damning thing you've done <laughs> to our name and whatever reputation you know, we might I'm still have. hoping that I'm actually recording this cast. We'll find out at the end of it. You know, either <laughs> way, it'll be a good time. Um, so, since we've talked about how there's a billion changes, do you want to just start off with whatever comes to your mind first? Well, I think that the the items that were introduced in this patch are so perfect. There's one that I'm like, mm, about. But I think every <laughs> single one actually really, not solves a problem, but is really a good kind of response or kind of fills a nice little niche that, you know, is going to be useful. I think both, you know, in pub games and competitively. My favorite one, uh, I was actually going to save it for last so I could... So I could segue into the the secret third hero that sort of got added. Oh, thank God. But uh no, I'm actually I'm gonna start with Rod of Atos, yes. actually. It is a fantastic little item built of two staves of wizardry and a vitality booster. Uh an activate for fifty percent movement speed slow for four seconds winds up giving you twenty five int, two hundred fifty health. We kinda covered these items in episode five, by the way, uh when we talked about the Dota one changes but you know deal with it uh you get them again because now they're in dota 2 hooray um i i really like this item it actually reminded me of the game that we talked about before mtw versus the retry back in the benq clash and we saw zeus just picked up two vitality boosters and it got me thinking there really isn't a quote-unquote like cheap item that spellcasters can get that's beneficial to you know, them being casters and also giving them tank ability. And, and this is really an item that fits that niche perfectly. I just think funny, well, like, like I definitely agree with you. And, you know, obviously with a lot of those heroes, I mean, uh, some of them do provide that nice CC, but others really could use that additional 
uh, assistance, I guess, in team fights or ganking or what have you. And this is a perfect addition. And I mean, it's not like the cheapest item on the block, but when you compare it to like a sheep stick, where this total cost is like the same as just a mystic staff almost, <laughs> then it's actually not so bad to build. Um, I also want to say this is pretty much pretty much made just for not just for, but like especially for Zeus. I feel like, and especially because like. Isn't Atos, doesn't that feel like some kind of mythology, like, it's from something like that, and it just fits uh, right in his alley? It, it, the, the little symbol for it looks like a bone, too, so it's, it's you know, some kind of crazy myth, shaman crazy dream-walking kind of craziness. Yes. Uh, you know, <laughs> yes is the answer. The so it is made for Zeus, I'm correct. Um, there you no. go. No, I really do like it on Zeus, and I think also Silencer, who we're going to talk about because he got added, wow, he doesn't provide <laughs> a slow or a stun, and so uh, this is a way to give him intellect, which he needs for his abilities, which we'll cover later, um, and it's something to give him some added utility because he's so dependent upon you know Silence. To... I really wish you told me that before I started playing him, because I never even thought Are you about serious? it. Are Wow, that's I never right. even thought about it. Well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Do it on demand, bringing you information so you're better and so that the people who are doing it get better as well. Everyone learns. That's okay. Everyone learns, <laughs> yes. How about you, uh, I mean, do you have any other heroes you think this would be really good on? I mean, it, it honestly will fit on most heroes. I mean, it, you probably won't need to build it on, uh, um, you know, like a lion or vengeful. I mean, because they already have some nice hard CC but when, uh, you know, I, I could see it built on uh, even possibly, who knows? People... Dude, Crobolus. I'm just thinking Crobolus. We uh, saw in a game recently where she picked up a Vanguard. And it's like, oh, that's, that's cool, but it's unfortunate because you're picking something that is just for tanking. And all she has is the Silence, um, just like Silencer. And, you know, when you consider that her ghosts are about as fast as enemy heroes too, being able to slow them down and make it easier for a ghost to do the damage, I think that might be something... It's, it's definitely an option, I think. It's interesting that you bring that up. And I, I do... Because, yeah, you, like you said, you build, you buy that VIP booster for, like, a Vanguard pretty often. Not very often, but, like, she does need that tankiness. Um, intel intelligence, of course, you know, that's going to help out to spam her uh, stupid wave spell that I don't remember the first... I, don't want, I was going to call it Carrion. Professor? I was going to call it Carrion, but it's not. Yes, yeah, Crypt. The C word, <laughs> as they say. Um... But, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I definitely, I could see a purpose. Just, like, I think especially if you hit on the nail with the ultimate. Just because those ghosts are so slow, like, that could actually really help her out. But, um, you know, when you have to think, think about, like, oh, well, I'm spending 3,100 gold. Instead, I could have maybe spent that towards a Yules or a Sheep Stick or something that will actually disable or help, I don't know. Like, Crowd control, you, yeah. You could go different ways with it. But, yeah, in the end, I think she would definitely benefit more than other heroes from it to say the least yeah i mean that's the nice thing too about the item um it's kind of on par with yule scepter divinity you know the yule scepter costs 2800 to complete whereas the rod costs 3100 so a little bit more expensive but not by much and yeah all the components are somewhat expensive the cheapest one is a thousand then obviously the VIP booster is 1100 it's not like you can really it's not a lot of small pieces where you can get these little gains along the way but it's not like you have to save up for a mystic staff or the ulti orb like you do for sheep stick where you really kind of need a lot of farm in order to make that item pick up viable absolutely so um so in the end uh probably we probably won't see it competitively picked up like very often i mean it would be interesting to see if teams do go with it and see where they what direction they take it with like but in the end, I, I don't honestly see it being used too often, unfortunately. But cool. I, I, like, all these items are cool. That's what I like. Like, they all kind of, I feel like they bring yeah. something possibly new to the table that we didn't see before. I mean, yeah, I think they're all, they're very niche items. And you're, there are going to be situations where I think when you look at the games now, like, like I was saying in that game MTW, where we saw Zeus picked up two VIP boosters. That would have been a perfect situation to pick up this item to get some more, to get the slow, and then to get the tankiness. So I think there are situations that we've seen already where it would be useful. So I think, yeah, it's not something you're going to see all of a sudden in every game, but I think, like, all of these items, you might wind up seeing more often than you might think. Speaking of items that you probably will start seeing, um, I'm going to go into Heaven's Halberd, um, mm. just because this item is, in my opinion, very awesome. 
Um, but anyways, I'll go into it. So basically, um, it requires uh, a Sange, which is, uh, you know, the 10 damage, 16 strength. It gives that slow proc chance. It slows moving for 4 seconds. In addition to a Talisman of Evasion, uh, which gives that just 25% straight up evasion. And when they're combined, this item gives 25 damage, 20 strength, 15% maim chance to slow for 20%. Uh, for that four seconds, so it's exactly the same as the Sange. And then 25% evasion, so that carries over. Um, but then it has an active, which is disarms the target for four seconds. Um, it actually only lasts three seconds on melee targets, though. So, um, 30 second cooldown, 100 mana cost. I am... I No doubt in my mind will we start seeing that, and I think on strength heroes... Um, that are now actually entering the meta, which is really cool. Like, you're seeing all these, like, Night Stalker, Dragon Knight, like, all these t big tanky guys. I think this will fit right in there. I think Night Stalker is probably one of the better fits. Um, this is definitely going to be something that you'll see quite a bit, I think. Especially against, you think, heroes like Anti-Mage. Um, the evasion's going to stop you from getting mana burned. Um, you know, the disarm, of course, is going to stop them from being able to do the damage. And you think heroes that get the really quick attack speed, like Anti-Mage, uh, yeah, that's going to be a lot of attacks you're going to wind up canceling out because of that disarm. I think it's a really fantastic item. I mean, there aren't a ton of strength heroes that you see in the game in the, as a part of a metagame right now that are just there to take damage other than maybe Dragon Knight or uh, Night Stalker. I guess they're probably kind of the big ones that still wind up just being tanky and good because they're tanky. Yeah. But I think they, they will be it will be a nice item on both of those heroes. Well, I mean, I also, I could see it picked up on AGI carry too, to be honest. Just because, probably a melee one more than an agility one, but um, just because, I mean, a Sange is a nice all-around, gives you health, gives you kind of that slow, um, which some agility carries need to help get their kills that they normally can't. Um, evasion, that's always going to help you to not die as quickly. And then the disarm, you're obviously going to be up in people's faces. So I, I, I could possibly, I'm curious, that might actually also get picked up on even AGI carries just because, yeah, like I said, you, you know, provides all those benefits. I'm suspicious, but it is possible. <laughs> well, I do think it is funny, though, that you think you have this talisman of evasion. I mean, I think that just in your head, you would think a tanky hero would make so much use of that. But for so long, it's only been on a carry item. Yeah. Or something that we think of as a carry item, the butterfly. And so now you think um, those just up-in-your-face strength heroes that you want to stick around and be alive for a long time so that they can really put their utility forth and make good use of themselves, it's going to be really helpful for them. Obviously, you're going to be picked on Central War Chief every game. Every single game. Actually, that would be pretty sweet. <laughs> Babe mm. on him. <laughs> pretty silly. Dude. Auto It'll attack happen. centaur. Uh, you know what else centaur is going to pick up? Abyssal blade. Because why not? Because this... you're going to describe it. Yes, I will <laughs> describe it. Um, I this item is the one that to me is just very puzzling. Like I I understand it, but it's just it's pretty crazy. The co total cost of the item is six thousand seven hundred and fifty gold. Built out of a skull basher and a sacred relic, has an active to stun a target for two seconds. This can go through magic immunity, so we're thinking BKB. We're also thinking Naix Rage. Uh, has the passive bash for 1.4 seconds. Uh, grants you 100 damage, 10 strength. Has a 25% chance uh, on hit for the melee, and then 10% on range with a mana cost of 150. Ooh. Actually, this and Heaven's Halberd really pretty expensive item use costs. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're not going to see them early on in the game, but it's still going to be quite a heavy price to pay to use those abilities inside team fights. Yeah, I mean, you think about it. I mean, 150. But these carries that will pick this up. I mean, when I'm thinking like, okay, it's going to be obviously heroes that attack incredibly fast, so it's going to be like faceless. Well, it wouldn't be faceless. He's already got bash. Never mind. It would be like anti mage. Yeah, anti mage is the only one I can think of right now. But honestly, <laughs> like let's just say anti mage did pick it up. The only thing he's really using is mana on his blink, and it only costs fifty mana. So mm -hmm. um, when you're thinking of it like that, um, he's got enough mana to go around, especially if like he goes like a battle fury build or something. Um, yeah, he's gonna have a ton of mana to work with. So I don't see that. Especially it's also it's also a minute cooldown. 
So it's not like he can spam it in a fight. So you know, if you lose it the one time in the fight, and then he'll have the rest of his mana pool to blink and be crazy and have fun. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, it is it is expensive as far as items go, except for maybe the exception of Codex might be like the only thing. Dagon, wow. Codex, lol. Lol. Why would I even? No one even <sighs> built that. Dagon. Well, it's not getting one builds Dagon. Anyways, um, I'm done with that thought. Did you have anything you're... Okay, the I thing I really like about this item, it's really good against, like, Enigma especially, because you're going to be able to, even if they have BKB, they pop it, they start channeling the ulti, don't worry, you can just blink behind them and stun if you're thinking something like That's Anti-Mage. Um, it's not... There's not a ton of strength on the item, so it's not like it's something that you're only going to think of for strength heroes. Uh, it's also an item because it's so expensive. It's going to be a really late game option for these scary heroes as well. You're not going to get that quote unquote bought out so quickly, and the bash is really going to help you take out heroes and just keep them locked down. It's it's going to be a lot of utility in there as well. It just seems like a pub pub uh, like troll build. We okay. saw Ricky Maru build it the other day. Right. I mean pub troll build, which we won yeah. with it, but still. I don't think it was quite just because of the Abyssal Blade. I mean, it's possible. Well, on a hero that scales so well with agility, you'd think he would go yeah. with agility items. But he actually, I don't even know if he... He went, like, Defusal Blade. That was his only agility item, I think. Mm-hmm. He went something else strength-oriented. Yeah, it was pretty anyway, But that's off-topic. Yeah, the other thing, too, you think two seconds of a stun through immunity. Black King Bar, once you drain it down to its lowest duration, that's five seconds. That's almost half the Black King Bar duration. That you're stunning somebody for. Um, actually, you know, it'll have about two seconds left, you think, if you factor in your reaction time as well. So yeah, that's hardly any time at all. It's all of a sudden that Black King Bar isn't so scary. It's not the kind of uh, end all immunity that we're so accustomed to thinking of it as. I am in agreement, my liege. Um, Fantastic. But speaking of items on carries, I want to transition into Ring of Aquila. That's how you pronounced it the last time. You know, I want to go yes. with it, because I like that. The Thank you. The Ring of Aquila. Like, this in the Rod of At- Atmos is just like some Nordic god. I don't know where I'm going with that. I'm going to stop. Here we go. Ring <laughs> of Aquila. Um, basically, it's a combination of a Wraith Band and the Ring of Basilis. Bas- Basilius, sorry. Mm-hmm. There you um, go. And that total is 985 gold, so incredibly cheap, of course. Um, and essentially what this is, is, um, so I'll just read off the stats. Passive Aquila Aura grants man regen and armor in a 900 AoE. And then the active, you can activate it to toggle whether the aura affects other non hero units or just heroes. Um, and then multiple instances of this aura do not stack, of course, only one in this 900 AoE. Um, and the stats it gives is 9 damage, 3 doll attributes, 3 agility, 1 armor, and then the aura is 0.65 mana regen and 2 bonus armor so essentially it is just those two items combined but you know why i like this item so much and i think i described it last time we were going over it is because it, it just it makes so much sense i mean um, what you see a lot especially in competitive games is you'll see the carry uh in the lane when they especially when they when they try lane or whatever he'll go straight for that ring of basilius right away just because it'll help you uh determine where your lane is like you can control if the creeps get the armor or not, to figure out if you want to push or you don't want to push. Um, also, that mana really in armor does help a lot early game against like ganks and you know setting up spell casts and whatnot. Um, and then, but the, the 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 issue that we've always had with that is that you know that's all it provides. And then when you get into the game farther into the game, um, now you just have this thing that provides barely any stats, and it's obviously not worth anything. And now you can add that Wraith Band stats to it, and it actually provides some really nice benefits to the hero. Yeah, I mean, it's really just for the sake of condensing down the backpack, and like I said before when we talked about it in Episode 5, I generally am the person that winds up having to buy the Ring of Basilius in pub games at least, but I have definitely noticed more and more agility heroes are a lot more willing to pick up this item now and, um, you know, that's always nice when you can kind of take some of the pressure off your supports and make it a little bit easier for them to start working towards, you know, items that they generally have a hard time getting in the first place. Yeah, I mean, you figure the Ring of Basilius costs 500 gold, 
So if you're saving your support that 500 gold, that's boots. Uh, yeah, that's like exactly. amazing for so many reasons, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when we see so many games where, well, not so many, but we've seen games in the past where supports can't afford boots because that's just the way it's gone, you know, 30, 40 minutes in, and they're getting close, you know, 300 gold, oh, crap, I need to buy wards. Um, it, you know, it's, it's really nice to be able to get something to encourage more of that, I guess, team play when you think of a lot of agility carries as just being kind of off on their own farming or just, you know, sort of one-man teams, at least in pubs. Well, yeah, I mean, you do see different levels of uh, play in the pubs compared to the pro games. And obviously, we want to try to focus more on the pro games because that's obviously, you know, the competitive scene is where you see everything in its truest form, you know, um, or I guess it's in its most competitive form. That makes sense. Um, (laughs) But, yeah, like, this just makes so much sense. And, yeah, like, I also think you said, and I didn't mention it, but, yeah, the condensing of the backpack just... Uh, you you would see so many carries get the Ring of Basilius and then one or two Wraith Bands. And then, oh, now I have to sell a Wraith Band to, uh, you know, buy part of my next item? Like, that always really hurt them. Because now they lose mm-hmm. those stats that they had before. But now, hey, these combined, I still get those stats and I have room to build towards my next item. Um, so, yeah, I just think overall it's a really smart idea. And we're going to see that, I think, very often. Yeah. I think the next item, it's the last item, correct? I didn't forget yeah, anything no, randomly. Right. Oh, man. I'm, d- oh, I'm so happy. So happy. Great. Tranquil boots. Yay! <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm... Reel it in. So it's boots, a ring of protection, and ring of regen. For a total cost of 1,025 gold, this is the cheapest combination for boots that there is in the game now uh, by about 350 gold. Uh, I'm not going to go to the exact amount. Yeah, 350. Close enough. Um, very nice thing about these boots. They have an active heal that restores 150 health over 10 seconds when you're outside of combat. Um, you can only cast it on yourself, so you can't just like try and heal somebody else. The passive is they have the potential to break if you take damage from heroes three times in 10 seconds. Um, this isn't... I'm trying to think of a really good way to describe this. But essentially, as soon as you get the first attack on you, 10 seconds later you get that back. It's not like it constantly gets pushed back as you take more damage so you could possibly wait you know, nearly 30 seconds in order to get that the, the charges back. Gives you 3 armor, 3 health regen and 90 movement speed which is uh, second highest movement speed on a pair of boots. I do believe second only to the boots of travel. Hmm. If these boots break they do bring you down to regular movement speed. Uh, I really like these boots because it's finally something that I think makes a lot more sense for support heroes. It's something that's going to help heroes, I think, probably the most uh, Tidehunter specifically and uh, Axe as well, who's that, I'm going to ruin it, that special bonus hero that I'm so excited about talking about, uh, who got so many buffs in this patch. You know, it's really nice to jungle with because you only lose the or the instances of damage only count against heroes, so you can be in the jungle attacking creeps, and then you can just be like, oh, hey, I'm just going to pop this right after I clear out the camp or in the middle of the camp. The cooldown is actually pretty low. Um, it's 40 seconds, but that's about the time it takes you to kill a camp. It's about the time it would take you to run between lanes trying to gank. I just thought it was really nice. I, I played with it the most on Axe, I'll be honest. And uh, it was really, really useful, I think. Hmm. Well, I mean, like I don't have as much axe experience, of course, as you do, but I do see this as a nice new option for um, roamers uh, in particular. You know, support in general, but roamers uh, especially, like uh, Earthshaker, Vengeful Spirit, even maybe Crystal Maiden. I mean, who knows? It could go so many directions. But yeah, for the reasons you just listed, and one, it's uh, the cheapest pair of boots that give a lot of speed, um, so that helps you move around the map, place wards. Um, you know, whatnot. Also, that 150 health, I mean, not huge, and especially since it's non-combat, meaning if you get attacked during, like, a health potion, you it will break and you won't get the full heal. Um, you know, not a huge deal, but I guess early on in the game, um, that can be nice to stay near the lane, uh, to be able to keep casting that every 40 seconds. Um, and then, yeah, the three, it takes three attacks to break it into normal boots. I mean, that's, it's really not gonna happen as often 
Um, as I, I guess I'm going to mention now Han to compare it to, just because there is such a close item to this called mm-hmm. Striders. Striders. Um, where essentially it's a pair of boots, and all is just a recipe upgrade, so it's a little cheaper. But essentially what it does is, like this one, um, it gives you that extra movement speed for a while, but in here's of uh, New Earth, if you um, get even, I think it's now, if you're even like in a certain range of a hero, it turns into normal boots. That's the way it's I set believe up now. so. Yeah, so, you know, it lets you move around the map faster, but as soon as you get near someone, it slows down. But in this game, you have to be targeted three times with attacks to even lose that speed. So you can still be, like, running. You could even, like, block the hero if he's not attacking you. Like, you can do so many things with the movement speed. They have to hit you a few times to slow you down. Like, I think that's just so impressive, and I really do like the way that's set up. Yeah, I mean, we. Um, I was watching some games today in the defense tournament we talked about in the last couple casts. We saw some fun force staff tide hunter play where he would get pushed into the middle of the enemy team and then was able to pop his ultimate. I see tranquil boots being kind of a really good way of doing that as well because they're faster than any other boots and you're probably not going to get tacked three times as you're running into the middle of everybody. You know, if a team fight's going on, it's not going to, you might not necessarily be the forefront on people's mind to attack just to get those stacks off. It does suck if you're trying to want run away. That's the one thing where you really do kind of get screwed with these boots. You know, if you're getting chased down, you want to get to a tower three attacks later, you're in slow motion trying to get to safety. But I think it's really good, like you were saying on roamers too, to try and um, get around the map quicker. It's nice on supports because you're going to be able to get to place those wards and get back quickly so that you don't lose as much experience. Um, I think all around just really smart is, you know, especially thinking Tidehunter, he's a melee support. So if he has to get up into the lane to try and deny and stuff, he's going to be taking some extra damage. And so it's really nice that he can be able to sit in the back for a couple seconds, heal himself and get right back into it. Yeah. Like the three heroes on my top of my list for this item is, <clears throat> as you said, it was Tidehunter, Earthshaker and Sand King. Like, I think those three would just be amazing. Like you said, because they're melee, they're ultimates and spells, and you need to be right near their whole team to really make a good use of. Um, and I just, yeah, I think it would be perfect. Um, but you were mentioning, you, you built this on Axe a lot, because you've been playing a lot of Axe. Um, mm-hmm. I'm curious, because normally uh, the way people start out with Axe is either one or two Doran shields and then, like, some regen. Did you start instead with, like, a ring of protection in the Dorans, or what did you do? I like the mention of Dorn Shield, which is a lull term. Wow, I am all over the board. You are... I do not if, discriminate. If there with, was a board, you know. uh, the darts would not be landing anywhere near one another. That's but it's okay. Darts too. it's okay. Yeah, all over the place. <laughs> I just close my eyes and, and pray. Don't hit Grandma. Stout Grand Shield. <laughs> <laughs> Stout Shield, yeah, I think it's the term you're That was for, the right? term, yes. I thought it was really interesting, actually, because uh, it's one of the things I want to mess with first. It's something that you don't think about as much in Dota. You, we've kind of seen it a little bit with Hands of Midas lately, kind of becoming popular on, like, Skelly King, where you start running into the problem where, oh, yeah, Hand of Midas, it's great. It helps you farm. It has, helps you get more experience. But you're not strong early on. It's something that's going to help you be strong much later on in the game. The Tranquil Boots are kind of a similar thing where because they're so cheap, you're going to be so much faster than everybody else by the time you finish them that you're going to be really strong ganking in the early stages of the lane. I actually wound up getting a Stout Shield, the Ring of Protection to get the armor, and then a Health Potion, uh, Healing Salve. And that was enough. There was one time where I was like, oh, this kind of sucks, and I wound up having to uh, I just pull the bottom lane in order to get some more experience and get that gold. But you only have to farm up 350 gold, and then these boots are finished. Because of the movement speed, this means you can get from, let's say you're on the Radiant team, you can get from your jungle up to top lane. It's not, you're not losing a lot of time. And so I think the problem you have when you play a lot of these uh, roamers and junglers is you wind up spending so much time just moving between point A and point B that if you don't get kills, then you're really setting yourself far behind. You know, the other thing I really like about these boots too is if you look at the recommended for a lot of support heroes, you see like phase boots and that gives you attack, which isn't really that useful for support. I guess you could say denying sure the speed boost is nice, but these boots are going to allow you to stay in the lane. They're going to allow you to harass a little bit more um, because they're so. It's not like arcane boots, which are yeah, really useful. 
for supports, but they're kind of expensive, so you can't even really think of those as maybe viable options all the time. I just, I think there are a lot of situations that these boots are going to be really useful in, and I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, how often they get picked up. I know I'm probably, you know, nine times out of ten going to be looking to build these on the support heroes I play. Yeah, I mean, it's still, I think it's going to be important that at least, like, one support or someone gets the arcane boots still just for their team to feed the uh, pushing. Um, sure. But yeah, I de- no, I definitely think this is a lot, it makes a lot more sense than phase boots on Lich or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely in agreement with that. So yeah, we'll have to see how that turns out when they go to. You know what, actually, I was going to say, the tournaments are actually using this patch, I believe, aren't they? Um, or did they revert I don't think back? so. I think they're still functioning on last patch, mm. but Gondar and Ursa are available at the moment. Um, if they are, I, I watched some of the defense games that happened today uh, and yes, or were they yesterday? Recently, since the patch, basically, um, and nobody picked up any of these items, so I don't think they're quite in the game yet, mm-hmm. at least for in the tournament mode. But yeah, we we you started me off on Axe, but I had that last little bit about uh, support heroes. Axe got a lot of buffs in this patch, and I love it to death because I I feel for Axe, man. He was picked up, I think, like twice uh, in the competitive scene, and unfortunately, uh, I don't think he did quite so hot. Uh, we never saw him again, unfortunately. Just those handful of times. It's funny because we're even seeing, like, Riki Maru uh, out of left field, especially in the defense. Um, you know, his... Berserker's call ability, the AoE taunt, is so useful. But unfortunately, people just weren't really feeling his other abilities. Luckily, he got some just overall stat buffs. Um, The cooldown on Berserker's call was decreased. He now gets a speed boost from his W, which I unfortunately... I don't have his uh, his little sheet up in front of me to be able to look at the names of the abilities. My apologies. Counter Helix got buffed. The cooldown's reduced. Uh, I believe the damage was increased as well. And his ultimate, Decapitate, when he uses it, it now gives 60% movement speed if it kills an enemy hero to uh, friendly heroes in the area. So he just got a lot of buffs, and uh, I, I was playing him quite a bit lately, and he seemed to be a lot better. I'm really hoping we can see him maybe a little bit more on the competitive scene now. Hmm. I mean, I, I definitely, I think he, yeah, he's definitely stronger. There's no questioning that. Um, the thing that I think might not still make him too competitively viable as a jungler. First of all, there's no question he's a jungler. I mean, like, we could put him in a lane, but he needs some farm to get a blink dagger. I mean, he can't just, like, not... He, he, he can't support, so he needs to be in the jungle. So let's, we can agree on that, right? Mm, mostly. There was actually a time in uh, Heroes of New Earth where the... The counterpart to Axe called Legionnaire, he was played a little bit in the lane, and he would actually go behind uh, enemy towers to pull the creeps out and push the lane really quickly. I believe he was, like, technically in the lane, but I would agree with you that for the most part you would want to see him in the jungle, yeah. Okay. Well, that being said, um, like, therefore, I I just think when when I'm thinking of jungle heroes currently in the game, I just don't think he's still necessarily holds a candle to them um and when i'm saying that i guess i should refer to who i'm talking about um heroes like enigma um nature's prophet those are the two primary ones i guess you could say um the other runs are not really worth mentioning unless i'm i forget something i don't think Mm -hmm. so you're not even listening it's okay so um that's (laughs) okay (laughs) i know you're not i don't even know why i asked you a question um but yeah, so I mean, I, I I just don't know if he brings enough. I do like how a battle hunger works now. Um, yes. And yeah, I do think that could make him a lot closer to being useful. But still, at the end of the day, like especially in the competitive scene, and that's what I'm going to keep referring to, um, just because that's the way we should look at it. Um, obviously, the pros or the really high skill players are going to be able to deny or last hit a creep a lot better. And therefore, it won't be as useful. Um, mm-hmm. So I think it, you know, it is a, like one of the highest damaging spells in the game if it does its full duration. But that's not going to happen too often. Um, but the good news is it is kind of spammable. I think it's a pretty low cooldown, and it's kind mm-hmm. of expensive mana cost, but still, it's not a big deal. And then you get that movement speed, which is nice. Um, 
But yeah, it's a 10% slow on the target, and then you get a 4% movement speed increase per target it's on. So that means if you get two or three stacks, then you know you're sitting at eight, 12% movement speed. That is pretty nice, and I, I mean, I'm not questioning that. Like I said, I do, I do like him. Um, I think I like him more though in a lower skill tier than in the higher skill tier, just because uh, battle hunger not being so good. But his initiation will always be an interesting one and like one of the better ones if he can land that taunt on a lot of heroes. Um, but I think it needs a good follow-up after that because it's only, what, three seconds, I believe it is, um, duration. And then after that, I mean, if, if he didn't get enough counter helixes in that duration or his team didn't do enough damage, his ulti is not going to kill someone because they have to be under a certain amount of health. So, um, you know, he's really dependent on the hero's getting hurt in that duration, and that could maybe lead to his downfall, I don't know. I mean, the thing that uh, I was experienced when I was playing with him, actually, is if you do get these Tranquil Boots, because they're so cheap, you can really get started on the Blink Dagger right away. The other thing, too, when you played him before, or at least it was my feelings on him, is the Vanguard, yeah, I mean, obviously you're a tank, you want to survive, but it seemed like a lot of the reason you wound up building the vanguards because like yeah you want the health regen to help you be able to stay in the jungle um and not have to go back to base as much because you know he does take a, a lot of damage in the jungle despite um you know the fact that he's he's a pretty durable hero especially if you uh use the berserker's call it gives you a bajillion armor um i thought it was actually interesting how quickly you could get up the blink dagger once you if you went the tranquil boots instead of maybe going phase boots um in addition to that, I think the fact that he can gank effectively so early on, I think opens up some possibilities for some of the like push strats we've seen. Like I was saying earlier, we saw him in Han where he would get behind the enemy tower and just eat the creeps. Like he can just destroy the creep wave with counter helix. So he can really help put up a lot of pressure on a tower. So you think if you can get into a lane gank, kill one hero, injure another one severely, your team might have the opportunity to let him get behind the creeps, you know, get behind the tower, kill the creeps, and then get a tower kill really early on into the game. I don't know. I, I can agree that we probably won't see him, like, all of a sudden. I don't think he's going to be in, like, every game just because of these changes, but I think it'll be interesting because we have seen teams try him before now that he is, I think, so much better. Uh, he he might pop in there. I think I like him for really fast pushing teams, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. That or um, maybe even a gank heavy team. I'm trying to think who I really like, what carry you might want to put him against. Like if it's probably not anti mage, just because you taunt him and he drains all your mana. <laughs> but um, like any other one, he wouldn't be so bad because he gets that huge armor boost from his taunt, um, which is really nice. Yeah, it's weird, because you would think, like, oh, yeah, any mage will burn all your mana faceless, but then he'll stun you, so you probably won't get the counter helixes you want. I mean, you're not the one that's going to be generating a lot of these kills, per se. I mean, it's not like your damage is going to be what seals the deal. No. Um, I'm thinking in pubs, though, you think he's actually pretty good against, uh, like, Husker. Like, a hero that you want to kill when he gets really low, you just want to get him out of there as fast as possible because when he gets that really low health, he's going to start hurting more and more and more. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I think he's definitely going to be potentially useful, if nothing else. I think he's going to be really... I think he's going to be a pub stomp hero for sure. Like, I can see yeah. that happening. It's already, I've seen it happen a few times. So, um, yeah, no, he's definitely got improved. Okay. Here's my problem with the, the, the some, somewhat blackouts in the middle of sentences and not listening to you at all. I mean, aside from the fact that you're really boring. Mm -hmm. I've been sitting in a practice game with Spirit Breaker open, so I could just read across the spells, have the, the nice little you know shop right here. These creeps are beating the crap out of me, though. Oh. Right? And I, gotta, I had to go out in the lanes, man. I had to show them who was boss. I had to are you winning? lay the smack down on them. Well, no, not really. Uh, luckily, my creeps are off doing their own thing now. They're pushing the base like bosses. But let's get into the Spirit Breaker before I lose this practice game and so I can actually, you know, 100% attend... Well, 95, because I'm not going to give you my full attention. Anyway, Spirit Breaker, one of the two new heroes that got added. Q ability, Charge Darkness. You basically pick an enemy... Enemy? 
Um, I believe you can use all neutral creeps, can't you? Yes. Too? So you can use all neutral creeps. So anything you can attack, pretty much. Um, you pick them as a target. You charge them. You get speed towards them, and when you arrive, you stun them. If you pass through enemies on your way to this person, you will greater bash them. I'll explain that in a minute. His W ability, Empowering Haste, gives him damage based on his movement speed. Um, he, this increases his movement speed and also provides a movement speed aura to the people around you. Greater Bash, his E, gives him a 17% chance to stun, knock back an enemy, do some bonus damage, 25 starting at rank 1, 100 at rank 4. Um, also gives him 15% movement speed. Pretty cool. For three seconds, and this is on a one and a half second cooldown. Finally, his ultimate. He uh, slips into the nether realm, so says the tooltip. Basically, he goes behind an enemy that you select and will greater bash them. Wow. There you go. That's it. That's the whole hero. Sounds like he breaks a lot of spirits. He uh, doesn't like spirits that much. Hmm. No. He's not a fan of them. Even though he looks pretty ethereal himself, he's got this weird flaming hair and then a, a lantern. Oh, we don't make judgments on this. I know. Well, you know. He he reminds me of Pose from uh from Legend of Zelda. Ocarina of Time because he's got the little the wavy lantern. I think it's funny because he's spirit breaker. Anyway, I'm so glad you made that reference. Things I find interesting. There you go. Can I go back in time really quick? No. I want to mention something about these tranquil boots. Wow. Because I'm also in a game to <laughs> look at silencer. I bought them just for lols. Uh-huh. And so they don't break when I get hit by creeps or towers. Mm-hmm. And then the heal doesn't break when I get hit by creeps or towers. Okay. So yeah. that's not at all how I thought it was. Nope. I thought it was... So I guess it's only heroes when they attack you. Yeah, it's silly. When we wow. did episode 5, the way you read it, it sounds like creeps do this. And that's yeah. why we were like... I think... I was very interested by these boots, even when we were just reading out reading them for episode 5. But yeah, now we actually see the way they work in practice. They are pretty cool. I, I think there is a lot of potential in them. Alright, sorry. I had to go back in time. I was just like... Yeah, thanks. No, it just ruined, ruined my whole train of thought. Just mm, terrible. It's terrible, like terrible, terrible. Thing. It's my turn to say my piece. Um, so I haven't, had, on Spirit Breaker. I haven't had the chance to play them, unfortunately, because I played the counterpart in this patch silencer. However... I have seen him play it a lot, and I also remember him a lot from Dota 1, although he has been changed uh, a good amount since then. However, I do think he brings an interesting, uh, maybe new side to the game. I don't know about competitively viable, but that will be, I guess, the beauty of seeing him when he comes into Captain's mode. I think, personally, he brings a lot um, that are, that's not in the game quite yet. Uh, just for example, uh, ganking from lane to lane. Um, I think he is probably one of the best in the game, if not the best. Um, and the reason mm -hmm. I say that is that Charge Darkness, I think, isn't it the range across the map? It's I, huge. Yeah, it doesn't if have... It, 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 I don't think the tooltip says anything. But... No, it doesn't mention the distance, so I'm pretty sure you, you can, can use it across the map. Yeah, like a rocket ship. Yep. Um, yeah, across the sky. Double rainbow. Um, and, you know... Just in that safe, like, yeah, it does start out slow, but the more you level up, the faster he does charge. And, like, by the time you get there, they came and react. Um, and it's just, like, so impressive. Like, it's here he comes. Okay, oh, I can't react. Now I'm stunned for two seconds. Oh, now he's going to bash me. Um, oh, now he's going to ult me and bash me again. And, oh, now I'm dead. And it's just, like, mm -hmm. like I think his ganking potential is probably one of the best. I mean, Night Stalker might be the only one that <laughs> does it a little better at nighttime, of course. But besides that, I mean, yeah, I just think he could be picked up just for that reason alone. Um, the Agamem Scepter part, did you, I'm sorry, did you mention the Agamem Scepter for him? I didn't. Um, essentially makes you be able to apply the bash to people in a small area around the your initial target. I believe it's through 250. Yeah. Um, it also decreases the cooldown significantly. Yes, yes. exactly. And that's... Um, that's, it's interesting, but obviously I don't think it's the right choice on him. Um, generally, the reason being, um, he, obviously it's a bash. So it's like Faces Void in the sense that, um, you know, the more you attack, 
the more chances you are going to bash. Because it's not like based on any cooldowns or anything. There might be like a small cooldown, but it's not enough to deter you from getting attack speed. Um, and I, I just, I, I think you really want to focus on attack speed on that hero. Like a Mask of Madness, for example. Or even maybe a Sage and Yash or something. Just something to give you a lot of speed um, and a lot of, you know, a gank ability. That's his, like I said, his main purpose. In a, in a big fight, he doesn't really do a whole lot in my opinion. You know... Yeah, I think that's one of his drawbacks. The other one, too, is you actually get a debuff when he is within 3,000 range of you, that he is coming coming for your your your, exactly. your girly parts. Um, yeah, he is, he's going to get there, whether you like it or not. So I think that's one of the problems that we're going to see with him competitively. It's, it's kind of a weird thing, because if you don't know he's coming at all, then yeah, it's like, it's kind of potentially... A big deal. I mean, he could just completely destroy your lane um, if you have no idea. But because you can know 3,000 units away, even though he's moving very quickly, that's plenty of time. You think competitively, that's probably enough time for you to be like, oh, hey, guys, in team speak, uh, Spirit Breaker's coming for me. I'm going to get sort of close to this tower, get ready to TP in and destroy him. Um, I think that's kind of one of the big problems with him. I think he's a very interesting hero, probably because... Um, we see him in Han, and we've seen the buffs he's gotten since we've last played him, and he seems to be a hero that people have, or, or that they really have a hard time trying to make good, but not sort of overpowered. He's really good 1v1, but, you know, what does he really bring to the table team-wise? Really, the only thing is the the movement speed. Actually, in Han, he they gave him the Bat Rider ultimate for some reason, they made his bash not random. Like they did a lot of really weird things. It's sort of really interesting to see the difference yeah. um, between the two heroes. I think the one thing, the one really good change that they did is, you think Spirit Breaker is really good at destroying the flimsy heroes. And so if you're thinking about in the lane, your support's probably going to be further back, just kind of to babysit. They might be you know in the jungle or whatever. Um, but if you can't really charge past heroes because you can be stunned while you're charging uh, you can be stunned and slowed whatever so it's like if you try to go for somebody behind another hero they can stop you they have the potential and of course a high high tier play um they will try and stop you they will apply the stuns to stop you from getting those flimsy heroes but now if you charge through them you're going to be able to stun uh with your bash ability also interesting note that the q will go over the river and through the woods oh, God. Perhaps the grandmother's house. He will go straight through the house, not even the door. He just goes right through the wall. Very Kool-Aid Man-esque. Um, he will just ignore unit collision. Well, he'll do the bash, but he'll go over hills and stuff, up ledges. So the environmental things, they don't get in his way. We just went from Aesop Fables to, like, you just jumped so over the place. Like, you were talking about that dartboard earlier. You just... You just missed the yeah. mark, buddy. So missed the mark, dude. I thought that was beautiful. <laughs> Over the river and through the woods. There are literally rivers and there are literally woods in this game. I'm just saying. I uh, thought it was pretty it's good. Debatable. <laughs> it's debatable. Okay, um, fine. Agree to disagree, gentlemen's disagreement. Oh my god! Now I'm trying to remember what I was going to say. Um, Nothing useful, I'm sure. No. The thing is, not. when you're leveling up Spirit Breaker, you want to level the charge. You want to level the empowering haste. The bash. Oh, yes. The, the chance doesn't get higher, the knockback doesn't get higher, this movement speed you get doesn't get higher, it doesn't last longer. So the only thing you're getting from leveling the bash is the damage, which is, you get, what, 25 a rank, not... So it's anything. like a Dragon Tail situation. Um, yeah, the, the benefit you get from leveling it is really, really? small, it's whereas... just 25 damage rank? Yeah, that's oh, it. Oh, that's terrible. It is terrible. But, I agree. The charge, however, gives you... Sp- the speed that you're going to close the distance with, um, it increases the stun duration. Not by much, but, you know, enough to make it worthwhile. And, of course, the empowering haste, movement speed for you, the people around you, the bonus damage you're getting from movement speed, really worth leveling up. Um, I just wanted to quickly uh, maybe discuss the typical item builds to see on him. Um, I, I personally, like I said, I favor attack speed, so I think, like, an early tread, um, and then possibly going into... Um, you got a couple options at this point. You could go for Mask of Madness. I think Blacking Bar against a lot of teams uh, is pretty essential after uh, whatever your attack speed item is. Um, and then I think Assault Carries is usually a good way to finish a game. 
Um, but Augment Scepter, like, I just, I don't know how I really feel about it. Like, I really, I think it could do something, but at the same regard, such a, such a small, tiny AoE that it affects, mm-hmm. like, I just don't know if it could really do as much as you want it to. Yeah, it's smaller than Omni Knight's Degen Aura. And as awesome as that Degen Aura is, when I, like, actually realized how small of an area that was, it just made me a little, little sad, um, even though that's a really strong ability. Um, yeah, it, it's such a small area. It's not really worth picking up. The other thing, too, is the nice thing about Aghanim Scepter is it gives you a little bit of everything. It gives you some mana, gives you some um, strength and agility, gives you some health, but it doesn't make you really particularly strong at any of those things in particular. And Spirit Breaker really does take it, or what he, his strength is, is taking somebody out of a fight very quickly. Um, charging in, bashing them hopefully, alting them, knocking them towards your team, getting them out of the fight quickly, keeping them locked down essentially. And, you know, the Aghanim Scepter doesn't really help you aside from giving you the reduced cooldown uh, in that effect. I really do like S and Y on him, uh, St. Janiyasha, because you get attack speed and you get a slow, and especially when you have the chance to um, get the movement speed increase with your greater bash, you're going to be able to keep up with people applying more and more attacks if you're able to slow them, and then you're faster, of course. Um, in my head... I'm wondering they one of the situational items in the old uh the old four staff. This little sidebar they give you there. Yeah, of course four staff. <laughs> Gotta get that. Um Drums of Endurance, which is very interesting. I like it. Uh again, the only problem with it is it's a very kind of a generalized item. It's not very expensive though, so I think it's something that you could do. What yeah, do you think? Uh, well, okay, it's funny you mentioned drums. I was just thinking about this the other day and I wanted to tell you, but I forgot until now. Um so Trixie from Mal Sports, um, mm-hmm. who we 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 had little girl crushes on when he played Heroes of New Earth competitively, um, he he's like this ultimate awesome farmer racer slash carry, um, and he plays a lot of Dragonite recently. He builds Drums Endurance every game on him. I like it, and it's just like that item. Like normally you weren't seeing it very often at all, um, but then like he gets it on a carry. And like you're saying, the Spirit Breaker sent a similar thing there. And I just, I never really thought of it on a carry. Um, but I guess you can, since it's so cheap, you can afford it so quickly that, yeah, you can really honestly uh, use it very early in the game. And that can really help you in those early team fights to get those early towers. I mean, like, yeah, I just, I wanted your two cents. Obviously, you said you like it. I mean, I just like the item in general. It's really. A uh, good item to have for push and gank teams. Do you want to say its stats um, really quick? Nope, because my game closed out. I'll say the, the stats the creeps, really quick. The creeps are Just too strong. Just in case man. people are like, Drum of Endurance, I don't even know what that is. And actually, that would be me if I wasn't doing this <laughs> casting thing, to be honest. Because I Excellent. haven't built it once, I can tell you that. Um, but anyways, so Drum of Endurance, it requires a Bracer, a Robe of the Magi, and then the recipe is 750 so that's actually pretty expensive. But it's total 1725 so not a big deal. Um, what it does, it gives nine dollar attributes, nine damage, uh, five aura attack speed, five percent aura movement speed with thirty second cooldown. And that active that has that cooldown, that costs no mana by the way, is called endurance. It gives bonus ten attack and ten movement speed to surrounding allies. Um, and I believe it has three charges. Four. Four, Four charges. I even I knew I knew what you're gonna not know before you even I not knew three, it. Three was close. Maybe every time I see it, someone's already used it once or something. I don't you're know. always one short, man. When you were going over a medallion of courage, you <laughs> thought it was six seconds and it's seven. It's okay. Just round up by one next time. You know, knock it up. That sure. Knock next it time. up. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Done. Uh, uh, you've been there. Anyways. Uh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Did you have a thought beyond that? No. I wanted to say the stats. Okay. No. Um, it's it's really nice. Uh, Dragon Knight, you get it because he's generally part of uh, the strong push strategies, and um, it's just an all around good for stats. You think? I think the one thing you could argue maybe it's not really that good on Spirit Breaker is the nice thing about the item is it gives you the robes of magi, so it gives you some more int if you have those kind of expensive spells to spend. Um, I'm actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I would really be interested in seeing even something like Tranquil Boots on him, because the movement speed is so beneficial, 
to his damage. Um, I wonder if you could play like a roaming esque kind of spirit breaker, Just get around like a nut, heal yourself up as you're running around. Um, and you think he probably is durable enough that once he gets a couple levels, he could even stop in the jungle on his way around and pick up some creep kills? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I'm going to open a, a can of Coke while you. Well, that was while you so decide. loud, my ears burst into flames. Um, no, honestly, I, yeah, okay. He, he has the potential. Just like um, Crystal Man has the potential to go main carry. I mean, these things have potential. Well, I mean, but the thing is, I think Spirit Breaker is really, I think he's so good at ganking, you can't play him like you would play Dragon Knight, where he really does just sit in the lane. I wonder... Well, that's, let me finish my thought. No. You just wanted to stop me at Crystal Man carrying, because you were about to be like, well, I already did that. Um, Molesnir by four. Yes. Um, No, I mean, like I was telling you, I do, I think he's one of the strongest gankers in the game. Um, and that's where I think especially lies. Yeah, I mean, he needs he needs that initial farm, though. That's kind of what I'm like. Like, I think he needs at least some treads, some boots, some treads. Um, and then, you know, just get to level 6 especially. I mean, he doesn't need the 6, but the thing is, after he uses that charge stun, his bash is random. So he doesn't have a reliable follow-up until his ultimate. Mm-hmm. So that's my only concern with him being a roamer, um, is that... Like, and especially because you can see, you said within 3,000 yards, you can see that he's coming for you. And if you're aware at all, then that's, you're, you're probably not going to get ganked that often. Um, so I, I just think until he gets all six, he's really not as effective. That's, I suppose that's true. Especially in the competitive scene, yeah. Again, right. because you know when he's coming. Um, you have and to imagine words that. too. I mean... <laughs> That That's very true as well. Although you think because you can ignore, um, you know, environmental things like ledges and such, you could probably ninja some pretty good charges if you felt so inclined to to go randomly across the map through some of the more crazy regions, uh, just up and down walls. You might be able to get around Smoke's some of those woods. Just constant smoke of deceit. Dude, that would be pretty sick. <laughs> smoke of deceit, then charge. Good luck. <laughs> I guess that's a lie to say on the Spear Breaker. But I do think the the Tranquility Boots might be interesting. Although you did say the you know the uh, attack speed is really good on him. Yeah. So getting that through Steam Boots. Alright. Alright, Steam Boots it is. I was yeah. trying to dream. You Just like dream. turning every hero into a support, I want every hero to pick up Tranquility Boots. Okay. So. Deal. How about Silencer, buddy? Do I have to? Okay. Uh, so yes. I've been playing... That's pretty much that is like one of the only heroes I've played since this patch came out. Um, and the reason being is because I always try to play him as a carry. That is the way I love to play him. And it I don't think I've won a game yet as him as a carry. <laughs> However, I believe that is the way I want to play him. But before I get into that and how I've discussed it with my failure, um, let me go over his abilities so you can see why I probably play him the wrong way. Um, so essentially he has four spells. Why do I keep saying that? They all do. Um, he has Curse of the Silent. That's his Q. Um, basically what it is, it's an AoE you target, um, that curses the target area, causing enemy heroes to take damage and lose mana until they cast a spell. Um, so it starts at 10 mana and goes up to 25 mana, second loss. 20 damage up to 50, 350 radius, so it's not the biggest in the world, but it's not bad. Um, and then it's a 5 to 8 second duration with a 20 to 14 second cooldown. Not not terrible in the end. Um, then he's got Glaives of Wisdom as his W. This is an orb effect. What it is, he can turn it on, and what it does is uh, it enchants his Glaives with his Wisdom. Wow, that makes so much sense. Dealing additional damage based on his intelligence. Int to damage is 30, 45, 60, and 75 percent of his intellect as damage with only 15 mana per attack. His third move, E, is the last word. This is an aura, so there's no activation or anything. It's just a passive on um, what this does. In a 750 radius around him, enemy heroes will be silenced whenever they cast a spell. If an enemy hero dies while under the effect of last word, Silencer will permanently steal one intelligence from that hero. If Silencer is the killer, he will steal two intelligence. Ooh. Um, duration is 0.75 seconds, up to three at the last rank. 
And then finally his ultimate, which is probably the only reason he's ever picked up in a game, is called Global Silence. And what this is, is a Global Silence. No, I'll read it though. Um, he stops <laughs> all sound, preventing enemy heroes on the map from casting spells. So for three, four, or five seconds, depending on your rank, um, no one, no enemies can cast any spells. Um, I do believe it goes through magic immunity, but don't quote me on that. Mm. Um, 160 second cooldown, that doesn't change. It goes from 250 to 450 mana cost at the end, but I guess if you're stacking in, which you should be, that's not a big concern. <sighs> that is Silencer. You want, me to, you want me to let you take a breath? Yeah, go ahead. I, uh, I think this is a really... A hero that I thought was interesting when this patch was first kind of whispered about and they kind of mentioned that it was going to be Spirit Breaker and Silencer. I was so excited to play Spirit Breaker. Had no interest in Silencer whatsoever. The more and more time I had to think about it, the more and more I was really interested in how Silencer is kind of going to fit into the mix. We saw Vindicator, which is the Silencer counterpart in Heroes of New Earth. He was picked up as a support, um, really with limited success. Um... And I, I think most people, if you ask them, you know, what is Silencer, people will probably more likely to not say, well, I think he's a support. Um, that's really the role of play. But, you know, it's really interesting because really all he provides is silence. There's no slow. There's no stun. So he can't really babysit that well. Um, and he really benefits from getting a lot of levels. So, you know, um, I know you've gotten to play him lately, so we can get your two cents. But I think really the best way to try and play him is the side lane solo, kind of like how we see Windrunner. You think the Glaive of Wisdom going to be really useful for helping you pick up last hits. Um, it costs 15 mana at all ranks for you to do this. There's no cooldown um, on it either, so you can just you know guarantee last hits on creeps um, as you're trying to you know fight in the lane for whatever farm you can get. I think, the, of course, the one drawback that is, unlike Windrunner, um, he doesn't have oh, an easy escape route. But I think if you were able to get something like a Force Staff on him early on, uh, I think he'd be a really strong candidate for side lane solo, get those levels up, get that ultimate quickly, and really kind of become a strong force in the game. Or a Rod of Atmos. Woohoo! <laughs> I would get both. I think the really cool thing about this hero is you kind of want to get all of those... CCE items. Um, every single one of them, I think, is actually really beneficial. The Rod of Atmos gives you a ton of int, gives you a slow. Force Staff gives you something, somewhat of an escape, sort of. Um, gives you damage, gives you ints. Uh, Yule Scepter Divinity gives you movement speed, gives you the sort of crowd control of throwing somebody up into the air. Obviously, Sheepstick, fantastic. There's another item. Oh, uh, Orchid Malevolence. Another silence, if two isn't enough for you gives you int, uh, as well as attack speed and stuff, which is going to help with your Glaive of Wisdom. Yes. Actually, yeah. a four staff is a recommended item on him. Believe it I think it makes a lot not. of sense. No, it really does, and I wish, really wish I built that once when I was playing. Um, I wish you had too. I don't even know what I was doing. What was I doing? I must have been I, just doing terrible. What did you build? I think you just stacked the uh, Mystic Staves. That's all I did. Just like, I just and, had six and, of them. And, I didn't have boots. I was just like, you know what? Int. Yeah, well, I don't blame um, Anyways, yeah, like I was saying at the beginning, I like to play him as that carry. Um, I did solo both. I tried solo middle and the side lane. Um, and he is actually pretty decently easy to last hit with. I tried a couple different strategies um, with how I leveled my skills. Um, you know, always try, I generally always put my point into Glaive of Wisdom first to get the most damage out of that. Although, uh, the more I think about that, like, since you don't have so much int to start out with, that might not be the best way. And the reason I'm saying that, I'm going to lead into it, is that the Curse of the Silent. Basically, if you don't get this early, you shouldn't get it at all. Really. It's probably pretty fair. Um, or, say. You, know, you should get it last, I guess I should say. Um, just because, you know, at, at the lower ranks, it really doesn't drain, like, any man or do any damage. It's not until you get into that third or fourth rank where it really starts to be noticeable. And, like, in the mid to late game, people have so much mana and so much health, like, it's not a big deal. They can even just cast whatever spell they want, they'll still be fine. Um, so it's really not going to be as beneficial. Where it really does shine is in the early game, it's particularly against heroes that have made big mana costs, um, so... 
not uh, Weaver or anything. You know, Mancer. You know, Mancer or Weaver. But, uh, <laughs> you know, oh, if there was like Bane Elemental, that's like a perfect example. But um, yeah. who no one knows, so I'm not going to go into that. Anyways. Sven, Shaker, both of those I right, think are those big are ones. Right, those are great ones. And it's, the other great thing is it's an AoE. So if you're in like a maybe 2v2 or 1v2 and you can hit both heroes with it, you know, that's that's some damage right there. And I've actually gotten a couple kills with it just because towards like the middle or end of a fight, people have already used their spells a lot, and now that you're draining their mana, they actually might not have enough to cast another one. So it can be pretty useful, and it's it's really it's curious to like figure out, okay, which one should I be investing in? Should I be going for Glaive Wisdom to be more of like that carry? in the mid game or whatever or should i be actually loving this curse of the silent to try to win my lane better i guess you could say i don't know yeah i mean it's interesting like you were saying you know if you kind of bait out some spells from people then that curse of the silent can get really strong when they start running out of mana it's actually since we mentioned axe already it's sort of similar to battle hunger like you were saying earlier well you know they're going to be able to last hit well you know, if you're engaging somebody in a team fight, you start knocking them down the health, you know, you're ganking the lane, their first instinct is to run. They're not worried about creeps, so it's going to really be able to do that full duration. It's sort of similar in that way. If you can bait out some spells on some of those heroes that really don't have a lot of mana, like Vengeful Spirit, too, even though she has the Wave of Terror, um, the stun pretty expensive, so if you get a stun or two out of her, there's not much she's going to be able to do. Um, it's a really... Strange thing because some heroes it's so good against, and then you have heroes like Venomancer where it's just LOL, spam my ward and yeah. it's done. Oh, that was ten fifteen mana. Whoops. Oh well. Yeah. No biggie. It's funny because the uh, E. Last word. Last word. Yes. It's kind of the same thing. Some heroes that's not really a big deal against, but then you think heroes like Shaker, especially when you get. Last word up to like level four. You think kind of like the best shaker initiation you can get is blink in, fissure, and then you wait a second. And then you enchant your totem to get the stun, and then you wait a second. And then you can ultimate, and then you get a really long chain stun out of that. But because of last word, you can't chain those kind of moves together very easily. Um, really strong too against like someone like Storm Spirit, who really depends on using that ultimate frequently in order to get the attack charges overload. Yeah, I I mean, the, it's kind of an interesting, the second bit it goes into about if they're affected while they die, you steal intelligence. So when it says steal, that means they lose it, you gain it. And that's kind of cool, because that permanently affects that hero. You know, not to make, I don't think there's like any heroes in the game that do that besides him in the game right now. Uh, I don't think right now. Yeah, I think down the road, uh, what's his name? I can't think of who it is, but I want to say there's somebody. Oh, yep, yep. Although, that's not permanent, so I take that back. That's That's temporary. But anyways, let's not go into heroes that people don't even know about yet. Um, spoiler! Anyways, um, (laughs) but yeah, I mean, but at the same time, they have to be affected by it, so they have to be within 750 radius. Um, that's not really a hard thing to do, I guess, but, um... You're not probably going to get too many kills, let's be honest, until late game if you've got enough int. So it's not like it's not going to like amazingly impact the game, but it is a cool feature, and you only need the one rank to steal the intelligence. It's not like the more ranks, the more it steals or whatever. Um, yeah. Kind of like Pudge's old Flesh Heap, I think, used to do that with strength, but not anymore. Um, not sure. Um, but anyway, It's way back in the day for I me. I also have played him as support. Only once, unfortunately, or fortunately, because God is awful. <laughs> yeah. um, I well, I played him as support with Spirit Breaker, so Ooh. our lane made absolutely no sense, and it was it was, and we were playing the long lane too, so it was just like, course, okay, let's just completely screw ourselves over. Um, and yeah, obviously, as a support, you are going to max out Curse of the Silent first, because that's really the only thing you can bring to a lane, besides your your last word which isn't even that great in the laning phase. <laughs> That's only only good for team fighting. Um, and then, of course, your ultimate, but that comes later. So you essentially have to try to max that out, use as much as you can on them to make them cast their spells or get their mana low, um, and then you just stock up on like a lot of mana potion or clarity potions and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it just really, I didn't feel like I was contributing. Like If I was like at that point, I'd rather be any other support. Because at least they have mm-hmm. bring something else to a lane. Like, he just doesn't do it as well as other supports, and I think that's why 
we probably won't see him picked as a support in the professional scene. No, I agree. You know, that was one thing that when I really started thinking about the hero, that doesn't, playing him as a support really doesn't make any sense because he doesn't have a slow, he doesn't have a stun, he can't protect a carry. Um, one of his moves directly scales with how well he can farm. Um, you know, his intelligence is going to get better as he gets more items. That means he's going to do more damage. The other thing, too, you think a lot of supports will hardly ever be in the lane. They'll be pulling creeps in the jungle. Uh, they'll get some experience from that, maybe, but they'll be off laying wards, running around, doing whatever. They're not going to get the levels they need to truly be effective, and that's one of the things I really like about running Silencer as a solo in the side lane is the fact that you can get the level 6 pretty quickly, and so you can be in fights across the board. Yeah. Um, if you're map aware, you can really help turn the tide in a fight. You can really help determine how it turns out with e not even having to leave your lane. Um, and then, you know, last word, it is a strong ability, but really at the later levels, rank 3, rank 4, that's when it really starts getting strong. Like three seconds in between spell casts, Heroes like Storm Spirit, that's really, really strong. So, you know, it's interesting that we've seen him picked up competitively for that support role when there really isn't, in my opinion, anything about that hero that screams support. Yeah, I mean, the, at that point, the only reason you would do that is then to counter their, their lineup because of your ultimate. And that's what we yeah. saw in Heroes of New Earth, I think. Like, he was picked as a support purely because the other team had, like, Enigma, Earthshaker, that kind of, like, Sand King, <laughs> like, heroes you want to silence <laughs> um, yeah. during a team fight. But besides that, yeah, he's not, he's literally going to do nothing for you. So I agree with you. I think I think we will see him. We, we, we could see him. I think he actually could be picked up just because of the way the game is played right now. I think silence could be huge. Like, against, I can go down a huge list right now. Uh, Nature's Prophet with his teleport, Antimage with his blink, Enigma with his black hole, Sand King, Ursh like all these heroes that could get screwed over by Global Silence. Yeah, the thing I think is most interesting about that ulti, it's like when you think about team fights in the late game, you could say, well, you know, Krobulus and Drow, they have an area of six second silence. But the really nice thing about Global Silence is think about it if you're trying to push into the enemy base and they have a Shaker or they have an Enigma, they have something with that blink dagger that's just going to sit back and wait. And they're going to wait till the team fight starts up, and then they're going to get like the, the ultimate going. If you're thinking about epicenter, or they're, you know they're going to wait for a really good time, just blink in and then do their ulti or whatever. If you global silence, then they can't get from that position in the back into the middle of the fight. They're going to postpone that ulti, or perhaps make them be in a position where you're very aware of exactly where they are, and they'll be a lot easier for you to deal with. Yeah. I think that's really the big thing about Global Silence is it's really strong in the laning phase because you can participate from across the map, but even in the really late fights, it really does bring something unique to the table. I yeah, I really do like him. I mean, and then, like, it's also his orb is pure magic damage. So, uh, and it's scaling. Like, how many orbs scale right now in the game? None? So... Um, I mean that's really cool. Like the better your farm's going, the be like exponentially better you're gonna be as a as a damage dealer in your group. Um, I mean he does need heavy protection, like just because he doesn't have that escape. That is his real mm -hmm. big downfall, I guess. But he is a ranged hero with a pretty far range. I believe it's yeah 600, so it's one of the farthest in the game. Um, I don't know. I think he with some good protection he could be a massive uh, damage dealer in these fights. Yeah, I mean I think the big things are getting the quick uh, Yule Scepter or the quick Four Staff, getting the somewhat crowd control -y, uh Tornado, or to get the quick GTFO from the Four Staff. If you can really kind of make up for those weaknesses that he has, I think he becomes a really strong hero to contend with. And, you know, I'm as much as I like seeing new heroes, I'm going to be really sad if we start seeing Silencers support instead of in that <laughs> side know. lane. You know, I, I hope it's something that people mess with because... Um, he's definitely a, a strong hero. I definitely wouldn't play him mid, though. Um, you know, yeah. we mentioned, oh yeah, play him solo because yada yada. But the mid heroes are the ones that are really, I think, the best at ganking. They're obviously in the best position to gank because they're equidistant from the other lanes. Um, you think heroes like Storm Spirit, like Pudge, um, that can get the rune control and then go and make something of it. 
the kind of nice thing, as I've said about Silencer, is he can participate from across the map. So even though he's in top lane, he can be in bottom lane as soon as he's level 6 um, with that Silence. So, yeah, side lane solo. Start doing it, kitties. I want to see it. Yes, me too. And p- please do it better than I did. Uh, <laughs> yes, for the I love did of horrible. God. Oh, no, my, he did. My item choices might have been, but I think I did a great job. It's just that we, uh, I'm not going to go into it. That they don't it was care. Just that, that you were playing. My my, my team cared. My team's my team failed me. That's all. Uh huh. It was my team. Um, <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so there's also a bajillion other changes that we're obviously not going to be able to get all into, but there's some really big ones for certain heroes that I would like to discuss. Um, I mean. Do you want me to just... What do you want to do? you want me to go down like a list and then you discuss them? Or do you have ones you want to talk about or what? You know, uh, you can just go down the list if you want. I think the one that was kind of really interesting too is... If you're one of those people that was thinking that, you know, they were busy being lazy over the, the holidays. Uh, you know, how dare they take time off to spend time with their family. They also added uh, something to the replay system. Allow you to watch it quicker and then have it slow down when action starts. Yes. I thought that was really interesting. Just another way to watch games if you're bored of watching people farm, as you often get if you watch enough games. Uh, a really, I think, neat way to watch those kind of really long duration games if you really don't want to spend all that time watching people in the jungle. Indeed. All right, so here's actually what I'm going to do I'm going to read the change. You can give any input you have really quick, and then I'll say it, and then I'll go to the next one. All right? Okay. It's like a buzzer round or something. All right. Okay, I got um, it. Hands on the buzzer. I'm ready to go. What is potato? Yes. Wrong game. All right, Necrolite. Sadus, level four. Now gives 600 mana if you kill a unit. Fantastic. Uh, really, really nice ability. Um, it's interesting. It's only on level four. So obviously it's something that's really going to come into play later on. Especially because I think I like picking up Heart Stopper Aura mm-hmm. on him. Oh, I just love that ability. Um, yeah, it's really nice because he's pretty mana intensive, so it's going to give him some longevity in the longer team fights. If you pick somebody off early on with his ulti in a team fight, he's going to be able to, you know, still be there popping out the death pulses to heal and do damage. Yeah, I couldn't put any better myself. I mean, he's obviously got an execute type ability, so he'll, he pretty much can guarantee a kill in the fight and therefore restore that 600 mana pretty easily, and yeah, that's going to be really helpful. Uh, next change on the list here, Dragon Knight. Dragon Tail range now increased from 150, 150 to 400 while he's in his dragon form. Called it. Um, I feel like I said that before the change happened, that that's one thing you really needed. I don't think it was recorded, unfortunately. <laughs> but I seem to remember one of our conversations. I was like, yeah, if only his dragon form did stuff for his other abilities so that they're a little bit better. Uh, I think that's really useful. I think I said it in episode 5 when we talked about it. It doesn't make any sense when you pop your ultimate to become a ranged hero, but your one big ability is still a melee ability. So it's really nice. It's not a really long range, but it's something. And I think that's something that's really going to make him more popular than apparently he already is in the competitive I was going to say, like, if this change came before he was getting picked up in this tournament, then that would make sense to me. But he's already getting picked up a lot. So this is just going to make him that much better. And, uh, yeah, I think he's not going anywhere anytime soon now, um, needless to say. The next one, which kind of ninja on me, was Skeleton King. His reincarnation is ultimate, so basically he anks. Um, cooldown reduced from 300, 220, 140, ranks 1 through 3, to 260, 160, and then 60. Yep. So, A that minute. is quite good. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting because if you are getting raped by Mr. Skelly King, it's kind of the same, a similar answer to that guy in Han, who's luckily, I don't remember his name, uh, basically Diffusal Blade, just make sure you don't have the mana, um, and it's really not an issue. It is nice that you, because at the first rank, I forget what you said the cooldown is, but it's, it's minutes. Yeah. So it is nice that now his ultimate is actually something that kind of plays more of a significant role in the game instead of almost being a random like because it's so long um i, I think it's just it a could nice happen so the thing is at rank three now that it's only a minute instead of over two it could actually happen twice in a fight if it gets dragged out that long well i would say it would be up for every fight 
more than twice in a fight. A minute for a fight to last? It'd be That's pretty dragged kind of out, but... <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, I, I just thought that was like, whoa, that's interesting. And then, in, your, in regard to your comment about the Diffusal Blade, if you go Soul Ring, you'll always have enough mana for your ultimate. Mm, well, there you go. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Take that, BDLM. Boom! Boom. Slap. Anyways. Um, yeah, well, there you go. Next change. Sand King. Epicenter now works through magic immunity. That is terrible. I hate it. And I had no idea. That's pretty nice, actually. That's a, uh, yep. That's a really <laughs> nice change to him. Um, I didn't know that one either. So yeah. That's just fantastic. Obviously, that's really he's a good hero without the ultimate, but that's obviously a huge part of why you want to pick him up. Uh, just a ton of AOE damage, and so you think if you can combo that with. Um, I mean, like, you don't even need, like, a black hole from Enigma anymore to stop people from being able to pop those magic communities. It's interesting to see that they are adding more and more ways through magic community yeah. because there were so few ways to get through it before. It's like Pudge Hook, Vengeful Spirit, Ulti, that's about it. Um, it's really interesting to see now that the BKB isn't kind of the end-all caster ability that it once was. Indeed. Um... And then I'm just going to go over one last one, although there were so many, like we said. Um, but let's talk about the Courier really quick. Um, no. Because he, got, it, he it, got a lot of changes. Um, so I'm just going to go over these few changes, and then you can say what you want. Um, so now it gives 150 gold to each enemy player when killed instead of just 300 to the killer. It no longer drops items when it dies. Um, it respawns three minutes after death, and the items they have are inaccessible during that time. Uh, the flying courier no longer has invulnerability shield, and the basic courier is magic immune. Like the flying courier, most spells did not work on couriers already, and the that, nope, that's it. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like it. I like just about everything there, actually. I don't remember if it was in Dota or Han we actually saw for a while. People were scouting with the courier, like, in the jungle to find the jungler. And if it got into trouble, if they found them, they just hit the shield, and it was fine. No big deal. They could just fly away. Um, it's not like people are doing that left and right nowadays, but, I mean, that's now pretty much not an issue or not an option anymore. Um, I think it's really cool that you give the, the global gold, because obviously supports don't do enough damage, really, to take it out. So anything that... You think the courier is really kind of a team thing, so killing a team item gives your team a reward so that's pretty cool uh, that's almost a stack of wards pretty fantastic yeah i mean i just was thinking like i've already seen a couple games in the past tournament that you've seen a courier just get away purely because of that shield and mm -hmm. now like people are going to be so much more aware of it like where it is uh, if it's coming during a fight, like yeah, you're just gonna have to pay attention much more, and I think that's really nice. So people can't just be like thoughtless about it; they have to actually. It's more to control, I guess, in a game, you know. Yeah, I mean, like I think you kind of sort of mentioned there, you could just fly it in in the middle of a fight if you activated the shield. Um, you know, you could be. It could have to travel through five heroes, and it's not really a problem because it's just invulnerable, so you can still get your items. Um, I think it's a, a good change overall, and yeah, like you said, it's. You have to be a lot more conscious about the courier, even though I feel like most people that would fly a courier over enemies were probably not going to be uh, at the ready to hit the R button anyway. <laughs> Talking about awareness, yeah. but oh, there you go. Then here's Very one that I forgot to say. Uh, runes will no longer spawn the same rune type two times in a row. That is actually really big. Um, yeah. It was the retry versus Yes, that's the only thing I can Navi. think about. <laughs> Where a Nature's Prophet got double damage rune back to back and got kills with it, and the other team never came back. It was uh, a huge, huge part of why they were able to win. Um, I mean, I guess that's really kind of a special situation, and obviously it's like Prophet, so double damage is anywhere on the map twice. Um, you're not going to run into that very often, but you could also, it's peace of mind somewhat too if you happen to see what rune like just got picked up but then you all of a sudden lose vision of the runes at least you know it's like okay they got the rune but it's not double damage they got the rune but it's not invisibility they got yeah. the rune but it's not haste so 
it helps you um, be more aware of what could potentially be coming at you. You know, it's something, uh, I guess when we were talking about Spirit Breaker, in Heroes of New Earth, they tried to eliminate a lot of the randomness of abilities where uh, instead of the Greater Bash just being 17% chance on hit, it was like a, a three-second cooldown and it would just automatically be your next hit or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but Dota still is very, very random. So it's interesting to see that they're kind of trying to tone that down just a little bit yeah, with uh, take a little the double bit of RNG spawn. out. <laughs> but yeah. RNG also makes the game. See, obviously, you can't control too much. But yeah, I, I do like that as well. And uh, uh, I mean, like, how many games have we said like, how many times is he gonna get haste? Like, that's just <laughs> yeah. like that's like such a common rage phrase, and it's just like not anymore, only once. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, Actually, I think one of my my favorite changes was to Crobalus. She got a uh, speed boost. Overall, I believe, and then she also got more speed out of Witchcraft, just movement speed, and um, that was when we talked about her and Ursa, you know, that was one thing we mentioned, it's like, well, she's flimsy, she doesn't have an escape, you kind of just have to hope to be fast and kite people all day, so that's a little bit easier for her to do, and so hopefully, uh, maybe we'll see her a little bit more. Um, I think, <laughs> I think that's about it, yeah? Yeah, I'm, that, I'm out that's, of, that's, that's, that's a boot it. A boot it. Okay. Well, thanks, guys, for tuning in for another Dota On The Man podcast, episode 9. Next episode, double digits. Hopefully we have a patch, because if I have to come up with something randomly off the top of my head again, it's going to be the defense. I'll just tell you right now, because it's still going on, uh, and it's the biggest tournament that I'm aware of that's going on. So, you know, tune in next week. I'd just like to say this is the second week in a row, buddy. We made it. Seven-something so proud. on a Tuesday. Within the hour, I'm considering that on time. <laughs> 7.59, on time, accept it. Uh, join us in IRC so you can participate with our conversation once we start getting some people in there. We will be sure to ask you your opinions on stuff and ask questions, yada yada. Please look around through our little channels for some of the breakdowns we do of random games that we find, either of our friends or just random games. Uh, looking to go through those, pick apart some of the play, and maybe break it down for some of the, the newer players just to help everybody really just get a little bit better at the game. So please go check those out. Check out our other podcasts. See you guys next week. No, same I'm bad time, same bad channel. I just ended on a Batman thing, and you have to ruin it. I, Thank I you. do, because you don't say <sighs> enough. You see, this is what happens. You have to let me talk, and then you finish it. Because you always say such great phrases, but then Sorry, I need I'm to finish s- something off. It's I just generally finish. I just finish a little too quick sometimes. You I'm really sorry. need to work on that. Um, I just wanted to say. Think about baseball. Great. That's what we'll do next. So time. yeah, like you were saying, <laughs> <laughs> Tuesdays, seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. That's what we're trying to aim for every Tuesday. Um, also, the IRC channel is pound Dota on demand, all one word, just like our channel. Um, and please subscribe, like, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your daughters. Please tell your daughters, um, for BLM's <laughs> sake at least. And, uh, okay, I'm done. If people get daughters on, then I definitely will end it quick. <laughs> oh, wow. But um, boom, right. ding. Oh, fantastic. Yes, please join us next week. Thanks again.